Recently I've been recommended and been watching quite a few videos on can I beat X game without doing such and such and I figured I may as well try and make my own video doing that. So I'll be trying to do Halo Reach without turning. Now what I mean by that is I'm not allowed to use the mouse in any way at all exceptions to the rules that can be done without actually using my mouse. Now when entering a vehicle in Halo Reach, no matter what direction you're looking, you'll normally be forced to look straight on, ahead, forwards, relative to the vehicle, allowing me to actually turn what not using vehicles. Another way I can do it is for a melee, because if your melee isn't lined up directly with an enemy, what it will do is it will snap to the enemy, and also if they're moving at the same time, you can melee them and hit directly at them. So I'm also allowed to use meleeing to actually turn myself around. Because this challenge is more of, is more of can I do it without using my mouse or, you know, moving the mouse. And also if anyone thinking that I might accidentally, you know, like bump the mouse or whatnot, I've got that covered as well. In Halo MCC, I've set the sensitivity to 0 0.1. So let's get into it. Alright, to start off with the contingency, all it asks me is to look around using the mouse. Now obviously, I'm not going to do that. And by simply just keeping still for a long enough period of time, it will just ignore that and continue the game as it should. And once I get out the vehicle, all I had to do was simply run down the hill and around the corner. Now once I did, I went through the door and tried to go for another door. But problem being is the way it's angled is I can't just walk directly backwards through the door in a direct line. I have to move over to the right before going back to the left. So I simply just walked past this account. I totally realized George just peered out of the ground, don't know why. Then I just continued on my way to the first encounter, in which I sort of just completely ran and passed by as I do not have time, and I can just skip it anyway, so I didn't see any reasons to why I should bother doing the encounter. Once I did that, I got in the truck, and there was a very, very weak attempt at trying to use it. Every time I was pretty much crashing into something or flipping it. Now it did you know, adjust my looking position, which I probably didn't need, but it got me a bit further without necessarily having to walk a lot, which is a positive. Before killing a skirmisher with the assault rifle and getting my first kill of the game, then it simply did some more running to this little area and killed a few enemies. And then I tried to, you know, just sort of walk past it, because in this level you can sort of just skip that encounter, but I ended up getting lost and walking in a circle before, you know, actually correcting where I was going. And so I circled back to where I was supposed to go before actually I ran to this area. Which I just walked past again as there wasn't necessarily much of a point because I could just skip it anyway. And then we got to this final encounter with the Marines in which I pretty much basically melee the majority of everything for shooting a grunt in the head and having it disappear on me. Followed by some more meleeing because to be honest this is probably the best strategy in this run before jumping in the Falcon and flying off to the next objective. Then when we got there I jumped out the Pelican, you know, meleeed some of the enemies to speed things up a bit before sort of just going in the outpost and spending the rest of that area just dicking around in there. Then once I'd killed everything we went inside the facility and I walked to their body. Now after that I simply just meleeed a covenant and then I did you know attempt to use them to the meleeing to actually turn myself around so I could kill more of these instead of just leaving it to George to deal with everything. Because to be honest he'd probably take a bit of time to do it. First assassination of the round then I just continued to melee everything before shooting myself when I saw the elite. Then remembering that I was on easy and so I was a bit of a pussy and I've fairly easily took him out. Fortunately I was faced in the right direction so I could easily reset the junction and that was winter contingency in about 23 minutes which isn't that bad I suppose. Now the start of only sword base was nothing too special, it was just a combat encounter, so of some fine shooting and some good meleeing 
it wasn't necessarily that difficult of a job to get through it. Now the rail section itself I knew was going to be a bit different because I was going to be able to manage to take down two raves while being stuck in one direction. Now first attempt to try and defeat them I did attempt to use a target locator which wasn't necessarily the smartest move because I ended up just using it to kill myself. Second attempt was a bit different I did wander up to a rave punch it and board it. Now for some reason I decided that I'd try and actually use the rave to take out the other rave which wasn't necessarily a bad decision as it did turn out in my favour because I shot the top off the other rave and then I couldn't really shoot any other part of the rave so instead I just let Cat jump into the turret and with enough time blow it up. Now once we numbed that and the water came out I figured the quickest way to get to the next section would be the ride in the passenger seat because I wouldn't do the gunner seat as I'd be the least amount of use there as I'd be taking an AI's job and do a lot better at the turret than what I could. Now the marine in the driver's seat decided to go to the generator area first. Now once they got there I just simply jumped out of it, activated the first generator switch and then sort of just ignored all that, walked to the top and then activated the comms array. I just let the warthog itself deal with all the enemies and whatnot. Now I did have to kill the two jackal snipers at the top as the warthog couldn't necessarily deal with them. Then once they were done with that I figured I may as well just jump straight back into the warthog and go to the second location. Now when we did make it to the AA gun so jump out of the warthog and simply walk over to the top and then somehow manage to assassinate that elite and I simply had to jump off the edge and time the pressing of my action button just right so they could activate the AA guns. Now at some point the AA got stuck on the side that they wouldn't want to move but what I ended up doing is jumping out and using the ghost. Because the thing is I can use the ghost because I can use my movement keys in any direction to move and so instead I just used the ghost to drive over back inside the base. Now I had no problem with this opening door itself as I could just simply walk behind the switch and use it. Now the hunters area is going to be interesting because I was sort of semi nervous because obviously this is my first time fighting hunters. Now with the shotgun it did make things a bit easier because I could do a lot of damage close up but unfortunately the, the weak spot on their back wasn't exposed enough for me to be able to properly use it so instead just resorted to just straight up shooting them without a strategy. Now I did shoot at them and throw grenades and given enough time I did manage to take one of them out and the second one was sort of just more of the same with a good shot and it was dead. Fortunately I was faced in the right direction where I could activate this elevator switch because if I wasn't this whole run probably would have been screwed as I would have been facing the wrong direction with no way to turn it. Now when I got to this area it necessarily wasn't hard. I had to take out the jackals and the elites. Now I know this little shortcut where if you walk across this bar here as you can see it will stop spawning Spawning, it won't spawn the enemies on top the above levels meaning that I wouldn't have to deal with, with any more air enemies in this area. Now with this area I knew I probably wouldn't have to do anything because given enough time Emil would take out all the banshees but I decided to speed things up a bit by simply just giving the marines rocket launchers. And one was bench was put in the right direction while I did manage to take out at least one bench in myself. But thanks to giving the marines rocket launchers I managed to speed up this entire process quite a bit. And so it ended up only taking me about 25 minutes to get only sword based on. Now for just about over the first half of Nightfall, I didn't really have to do much. I just simply started with assassinating the elite and then for the rest of it, I really just ran past quite a lot of it because these are sort of just encounters you can run past with zero to no problems. Now the only section I knew I was going to have trouble with was the section with the hunters and I wasn't necessarily wrong because once I got there what I would have to do is pretty much take out all of the enemies and that itself wasn't necessarily the hard spot because with enough meleeing and point blank shooting I wasn't necessarily going to have that much of a problem with this section. Now once the hunters turned up that's when things became a bit different because when I got up to them I only had a sniper rifle in June which is and a lot of grenades but I was pointed in a bad position. The first time I died it was because the sneaky hunter managed to meal at me in the right direction to push me off the cliff. And second time it was a bit different. I had probably virtually nearly full shields and it or half shields and full health and the thing managed to kill me in about two seconds flat on easy. So that was sort of confusing. Second time around it was more of just trying to, you know, shoot them in the back or just shoot them, throw some grenades at them. And so given enough time I did get a lucky melee one of them and then kill them. And as for the second one, I'm like 99% 
100% confident the Jun just shot it and killed it. And as for the rest of the level, I didn't really have to do much, I just had to continue running past everything. As there was no need to kill anything, because as long as I got to the end section, the game would play the final cutscene. And so I managed to get the third level done in about 12 minutes, probably most definitely going to be the quickest I get any level done, I'll tell you that. Now the first section itself didn't really have anything of note as all I was doing was stuff that I have been doing for the past few levels. Now once the warthog was dropped I simply jumped in the passenger seat just so I could get a free ride and when we got to the AA gun I stole the ghost and then used it to try and take out some enemies to both splatter and shoot at some enemies. Now once when I got inside the thing I was pointing at just the right angle where I could both break the shield and shoot a grenade into the battery. Now once we got past that I jumped back in the ghost and started to move my way along to the next location. Now, now once I managed to make my way through that I attempted to try and do a shortcut here and it did take me a few attempts but I did get it done and the point of this is that it means it will stop every enemy beyond this point from spawning. The only two enemies in which I'll have to deal with now is two jackals that seem to spawn regardless on the top platform in which I just run past anyway. And once I got to the vehicles I chose the Revenant as my vehicle of choice, managed to somehow splatter an elite. And then once I got there I used this to tr um, kill the hunters as it's got a bit of auto aim for me so I don't need to be spot on and it's also very effective at killing hunters. Now with the hunter that was left I used them as a turning device so I could help myself move more to the left so that I could both break, break open the shield and shoot a grenade into the thing and blowing up the gun. Now after that I did do a bit of cleanup work cleaning up some of the enemies that was left over and managed to kill them all and have the falcon land for me. Now at this point when taking this ride there is nothing I can do but fortunately I didn't actually have to do anything without doing it I was completely fine. Now once we got to this final area I run, did run past the majority of enemies as the only enemies I do have to deal with are the ones that are in the top so I can activate the switch. Now once I made it to the top I used a combination of meleeing the grunts and shooting at the elite with the fuel road gun to clear out this little top area and once I done that I simply activated the switch and so I managed to get tip of the speed done in 18 minutes minutes. Now, the first part of this mission was no big deal. I simply r ran past the first group of enemies and then killed all the enemies that came from the dropship. And once I'd done that, we I worked my way into the facility and made my way to the Sabre. Now, once I was given control of the Sabre, the game had a little tutorial telling me to use my mouse to steer. Now, at this point, I was thinking, oh, I might may have been screwed but that's not actually true. All I had to do was wait long enough and if you do wait long enough not only will it skip this part of the tutorial it seems to want to skip the entire tutorial as a whole and the game will continue as expected. Now the first part of this wasn't necessarily too difficult per se as it was more of a grind because at this stage in it all I simply had to do was take out the banshees and the banshees are one shot enemies which isn't necessarily hard. I would in this have very brief opportunities to actually shoot them. Window was short but I did manage to kill a few. Not to mention I also did have my allies who were also in sabers manage to help me to kill them. Now this section biggest problem was that it takes an extremely long time. It took me upwards of 20-25 minutes to do that. And then once I'd done that I thought oh, I was going to have the AA guns from the station to activate and do most of the work for me but this isn't true because after that section you've got to fight some seraphs and the problem with that is not only do you have to just shoot them you have to take out their shields and then use the rockets to kill them and problem being is I realistically in my current scenario do any meaningful damage. So instead I just set up my saber in the right position where it will simply just due to the side barriers the game will force my saber to turn inwards so if I go around the outside barrier with the game pushing the, pushing me inwards I can go in a circle around it and let all the other sabers do it. Problem being that the times I did do it after quite a long time it would by sheer chance end up running straight into one of these buildings or like a 
it'd end up running right into something which I didn't want to and end up getting me killed. Being is that if I'm to leave it there, it can go for hours before, you know, killing. In the case I've got here, I spent about half, one and a half hours gone before it crashed into the building. Problem being is even then, I still had one surf left that was supposed to be killed. And I also didn't feel as if I wanted to, you know, actually legitimately spend upwards of one half to two hours making sure the thing doesn't crash. Because putting focus in that long of a task is really difficult. So I didn't, technically speaking, this did kill the run. But what I did do out of curiosity was park the saber in a stuck spot where I won't deal any damage and I'm in a spot where I cannot crash. And given enough time, the other sabers can take out all the serfs. So in theory, if I was to spend the upwards of one and a half hours to two hours going around the outside, this in theory should be possible to do. So technically speaking, this isn't a run kill yet. In theory, this should be able to do it. And maybe one day I'll do that, but I'm not quite sure if I want to spend who knows how long. Because if I mess it up or whatever, you know. So if you do manage to finish that part, this is when the AA guns come online. And at this point, you don't necessarily have to do a whole lot. Because when the AA guns come online, they can pretty much shoot everything down, granted enough time. Now the one section I was weary on was when the phantoms was going to show up because in this part you've got to use the rockets to shoot the phantoms down but fortunately given enough time you can position yourself in just the right direction where the missiles will lock on and so you can shoot the phantoms down and then with that you can go into the facility and then continue now with this covenant cruiser part i had to shoot down the engines problem being is that there's only like one way to do it but for a lot of grinding and using the push barriers around the outside i was able to line myself up many times to shoot the engines Granted, this did take a long time, because if you look at the timer at the bottom right, you can see it go real quick. Now, once I've taken all the engines out, a bit more AI spawned, or more enemies spawned, and the AI guns did manage to be able to take out all the enemies. And then what I simply done was just line myself up with the top part of the cruiser so I could initiate the cutscene. Now, once we made it in the ship, I did do quite a lot of, you know, what we've been doing, which is meleeing and spraying at the enemies. Now, when I did make it to the docking bar, I did have to take out some enemies, which wasn't really any problem, and lower down the shield. Now, once we done that, I went back to the the bridge of the ship to activate the fueling run with no real issues and then i made my way back and so i spent this last little firefight area just shooting killing and milling all the enemies until we'd killed them all and then i could initiate the cutscene and so i managed to get long night of solace done in about three hours 15 minutes so this mission technically speaking hasn't actually been done but in theory you could be able to do this without using your mouse or without turning So I started Exodus off by running up to the three skirmishes and then killing them. And once I've done that, I got up to the suicidal grunt area. Now, this would normally, on high difficulties, kill you instantly if you run into the grunts. But due to this being on easy, it means I'm able to survive multiple suicide attempts from the grunts without getting myself killed. Meaning that the tactic for this is, is to sort of just let them do their thing. And once I got through that, we got up to the brutes where it was a combination of both punching and just shooting at them. Now once I've done that, I just saw this brute here, which is doing... I don't know what you'd really describe this as, but it was something. So I just ended up killing him, and then I made my way through this whole area of... By grabbing a shotgun, I was able to blast most of the enemies at close range and activate the elevator because luckily I was pointing in the right direction. Now first attempt when I tried to complete this, I wasn't facing the right direction and so I couldn't press the elevator button to go down. Now I did end up restarting the mission and second time around I met, planned it out to make sure I was facing in the right direction so, I, that, so that I could activate the switch. Now with the jetpack area, it was a bit of a pain. I did have to, you know, attempt this multiple times and you're obviously not going to see every single time I die because that would probably take a bit too long but it was sort of a bit of guesswork trying to sort of memorize where the platforms were and using the radar to work out where the ODSTs were going so that I could use that to help figure out in which way to go because not only would it show me what direction they'll fly into it give me a basis of whether or not they were higher than me or below me so that I could work out using that where to go and given enough trial and error and using their information to figure out where I was supposed to go, I did eventually make it to the other side. Now 
and when I did make it to the other side, I was facing in a semi-bad direction, but uh, I just threw some grenades, did some shooting with the shotgun, along with some meleeing, and I cleared my way through the pack of brutes and grunts. And as for this little second area, for the most part, I did end up just sort of walking past it, as it was an area I could fairly easily skip. And once I got up to this area, I just did some more shooting and some more meleeing as I made my way through to the top. And once I got in this room, I used the shotgun once again to clear the whole room out, and I did have grab the fuel rod gun so that at the end I could use it to shoot the anti-air cannons. Now once the Falcon showed up I simply jumped in turret and and simply rode it to the next objective. Now I did jump out and then help clear some of these jackals and grunts out, clear this small little area and then decided to jump in the passenger seat of the warthog so that the driver could help me get to the, the arm battery. Once I activated that I made a way across the bridge ignoring pretty much all fire from brutes and that activated the cannon and then went over, pressed the sw switch, fire the missiles and finishing the level. And so I managed to get Exodus done in about 30 minutes. So I started New Alexandria by jumping into the Vulcan and making my way to the first location. And once I got to the hospital, I simply walked inside, melee grunts on the first level and made my way down to the bottom level, walking past the majority of the enemies and making my way to the, to the first jammer and overloading it. Once I'd done that, I proceeded to kill the brutes followed by the jetpack elite swear which was slightly more annoying but still doable. Once I done that I simply walked up to the top back to my falcon and went on to the next location. My next location was to help protect these marines. I simply done that by letting the marines with the turrets deal with them as they would be able to do a better job than I ever could. Once I done that I had to go to the next location where I proceeded to allow the marines to continue using their guns to clear out the area before making it inside. Once I made it inside I killed two of the hunters uh, and then overload the jammer and then simply made it back outside to my falcon. Once I done that there was a jammer at the top of the rooftop in which I had to turn off and once I done that I couldn't get it back in my falcon so I simply called in for a new one. Now when I got to the last location I simply worked my way through all the enemies making sure that I lined it up in just a way where I could both act Activate the elevator and overload the jam at the top of the tower. Once I done that, I made my way back down to my Falcon, ignoring all the buggers that were in there as it'd be too painful to deal with and something I wouldn't need to even kill. Once I done that, I made my way to the tower to take out all the AA guns. I did have to do this part manually as the Marines were a bit more concerned with the Banshees and Phantoms that, and other enemies that were around, so I decided that I would line it up in just the right way where I could use my own turret in the Falcon to kill the AA guns. And so I managed to get New Alexandria done in 30 minutes. I started off the package by simply boarding a ghost and then skipping the whole first encounter. Now as for the second encounter, I used both a combination of the ghost itself by splattering enemies and a combination of getting out of it and punching them. As for the first Covenant AA gun, I simply went inside, broke the shield, chucked a grenade in and left. And then for the second one, I virtually done the exact same thing. Now I got my ghost and went to the next location when I boarded a Revenant. Once I did that, I did a combination of hopping out of it to have a personal attack on some enemies enemies and after only killing a few enemies, the level allowed me to continue progressing through it. Once I made my way to the courtyard, I continued to kill more of the enemies before making my way inside the facility and killing enemies while going up the ramp. Then I progressed my way to the encounter with the elites and the engineer. Now, the first attempt with this, I did a decent job, but there was one major problem. Due to me not taking too much care in where I was meleeing, I didn't have myself lined up in a good way where I was able to press the elevator switched and can open a cutscene and continue through the level. Now at this point I was sort of disappointed as I didn't know what I could do. Now this had happened a few times before and every other time it happened I simply restarted the level but at this point I'd spent 30 minutes doing it and then I remembered something. If you kill yourself or you die five or six times from the same checkpoint the game will load you back a checkpoint and yeah I probably could have done this on other missions but dum dum here forgot about that until now. So anyway I did end up killing myself 
myself five or six times before the game put me back a checkpoint. Once it put it put me back a checkpoint, I continued to kill the enemies this time making sure that uh, through the melee I was facing in the right direction so I could open the door. Once I got to the final section, all I simply did was activate a few of the stationary guns before making my way to the defense area and hiding behind this crate for a majority of the firefight. This way I could sit there and do nothing and have the game continue anyways. Now at a certain point I did end up getting stuck because obviously how this is designed is that you can sort of squeeze your way in there and you can't really get out easily. And so what I had to do is I had to try and crouch jump my way out of there and eventually I did manage to crouch jump my way out of there but due to the nature of the spot it's really tricky to try and get yourself out of. And once I got myself out of that I simply just stayed on a platform slightly above that and then they managed to kill enough enemies to activate Halsey's lab and I managed to complete the package in 40 minutes. And so I started the Pillar of Autumn by simply making my way down a cliff, killing only a small handful of enemies before making my way to a mongoose, blowing it up with the rocket launcher so that it'd be easier to get into the one that Emil was in. And then I allowed him to drive me through the whole mongoose section. The only problem was when we had to jump over a cliff due to the fact that the first two times he ended up doing it, he managed to fail. But fortunately with some trial and error, he did eventually make it over. As for the next part, I attempted to try and run past the entire thing. I managed to do it with just a sliver of health remaining. Now as with the cave section with the buggers, I did the exact same thing and it worked with no problems. Now as for the next location, I pretty much did more of the same, simply just finding a sneaky way to pass through all the enemies without taking much damage before making my way inside the building. Now for this next section, I ended up killing some of the jackals and elites before making my way to the section with the hunters. Now fortunately, I would bring a rocket launcher, meaning this was going to be a bit easier to take out the hunters as all I'd have to do is line it up properly so I could just shoot them and once I've done that I continued on my way. Next section wasn't hard as I just had to do some more killing then ended up getting an angel sword killing an elite just so I didn't have to deal with the jackals as they all went berserk. Now as for the firefight section at the end I managed to grab a shotgun from one of the weapon caches making it easy to be able to kill enemies at point blank range meaning that I could use a shotgun instead of meleeing as it'd be a lot more effective. There was also no real issues with this firefight section to note. The only issues I did have was me not being able to see and falling off the cliff and dying. Apart from that, I just used a combination of a shotgun and a gravity hammer that I pulled off one of the dead brutes. Now this is it, we're at the final section. As for the final fight itself, I didn't have too much problems as I ended up using the plasma launcher to take out a few of the enemies, along with the shotgun which I used quite a few enemies, and I did manage to get a lucky stick on a grunt. Now once I killed the final elite, it was time to use the Mac cannon. Now this was probably the most devastating part, because due to it being a vehicle, or acting like one in game, it means every time I enter the vehicle, or the Mac cannon, I am only ever able to face one direction, and unfortunately in no stage in the direction it points does that ever line up with the glassing beam from the Covenant Cruiser. So technically this is the run killer. The very final thing I have to do ironically is the thing that's a run killer. Now technically speaking I suppose you could say oh you're not physically turning as the Mac can turns for you but I'd count this as a run kill. So can I beat Halo Reach without turning? No. For one this final section is impossible with the rules that I've laid out. I was if you also allow a rule like you can turn in vehicles this wouldn't be a problem. With the rules I've set it does mean that unfortunately Halo Reach cannot be done without turning. So while I didn't make it to the end, which is a shame, I'm happy enough with the fact that I got really close. Now I'd like to thank you for making it this far to the video as this is quite a long video for me at least. If you managed to make it this far, you must have been at least enjoyed yourself so giving a like would be very much appreciated. If you want to see more content like this, remember to subscribe. I've also got a Twitter and a Discord server which can be found in the description. I'd like to thank you for making it to the very end. I hope you're doing well. I hope I get to see you again soon. One last thing before I go, I'm sorry I haven't uploaded in 8 months, I'm planning to do more videos, maybe not on a weekly basis, maybe every 2-3 weeks, so I'll see how that goes.